It's true that the ocean has given birth to many beguiling life forms, veiling its creation from being perceived by the world. One such creation is Australia. It all started with the prominent voyage of an Englishman, William Dampier, reaching the new land in 1688, which was yet to be discovered by the rest of the empire. It is believed that Aboriginal people of Australia were removed from the land either by force or will. It's still debatable in 21st century. However, genetically, there is very low evidence of the habitants before the settling of the Britishers. Australia has been shaped many times over the hundreds of years and seen many voyage, offering the land to its inhabitants. Australia had been the interest for many crusaders, the British, the Dutch, and the French. When we talk about the history of Australia, we should consider it all started with the colonization. Colonization. How did it all start? It appeared British Council were deliberately trying to settle their convicts in New South Wales as the prisons in Britain were overflooded. However, it was simply not feasible for Britishers to transport their skillmen convicts halfway around the world for this reason alone. The sentences were knowingly reduced, some were given early pardons, and also were given some piece of land to farm. In 1770, British seafarer Captain James Cook found the new island with fertility and complete alienated and declared it to be empty of human lives, which broadly attracted the British Empire. The Britishers agreed upon settling yet another colony in the new land, named the New South Wales. James Cook was awarded with the title Lieutenant. Sir Joseph Banks, along with Lieutenant James Cook on their voyage on 1770, found Botany Babe as their most preferable site. Penal Culture The New South Wales was based on a penal society. The rise of poverty in British era lead people to indulge in some criminal activities. Many people were either killed or sent away as criminals to America before 1776. Convicts were sent to Georgia or Maryland as America was under British rule. After America getting freedom from the Britishers on the 4th of July 1776, the Britishers were in the search of a new land to transport their convicts and criminals. Convicts were supposed to serve the penal punishment. Under the punishment, convicts were supposed to serve until their death. Assistance The British didn't do it all alone. There was some offer of assistance from a man called James Matra, an American loyalist. In July 1783, James Matra proposed the whole blueprint in settling the colony in the New South Wales which was quite appreciated by the whole British regime. The London Chronicles entitled James Matra as an officer of the treasury. It was never the plan to settle the convicts in the new land. It was supposed to be the Loyalists, the Chinese, and the South Sea Islanders. Later, Matra proposed to settle the convicts as settlers in the New South Wales. As the blueprint for the new colony and strategies were on point, it was time for transporting the new inhabitants to the new land. Voyage to the New Land French took an interest. The Britishers had their first sail on 13th of May 1787. It was believed to be 11 ships with 1,530 people on board. The number of convicts were high as compared to Marines and Marine's wife. The whole transportation and moving this whole lot of people from England to New South Wales was under the command of Captain Arthur Phillip. They arrived at Botany Bay. On 24th of January 1788, Jean-Francois de la Perouse led two ships to the new land. It was evident that the French had taken quite an interest in the new land. 
On being called upon by the British commander Philip, French some offer as they were much more provisioned in terms of supplies and had lasted three years of voyage. But neither of the offers were accepted by the British and the French had to leave Botany Bay after running out of supplies. La Pérouse is still remembered in the Sydney suburb from that name. What happened to the Aboriginals? Aboriginals are believed to be the real inhabitants of the new land. It was believed that the people from Africa had migrated to Australia and been there since the arrival of British colony. They had their rites and rituals before Catholics was imposed on the colony. Philip was granted governor title. Hence, he had full authority over the new colony and the locals. It was presupposed that he would maintain harmonious relation with the local Aboriginal people and would balance the disciple. But the journals and accounts of what Kintench says a different story. The first year of settlement was not much entertained by the locals and resulted in hardships. Britishers under the commands of Governor Philip. Soon the local Aboriginal people started disappearing. It wasn't much of a harmonious act on the governor's side. Aborigines had different reaction to the arrival of Britishers, but it was often confrontational as the colonizers brought diseases and now resources had to be shared. The reaction to the sudden change was quite obvious. There was no treaty signed between the regime in power and the Aborigines. Historian Geoffrey Blaney has said that there was occasional shooting in a thousand different places, which is an evident that Aborigines weren't welcome to be part of the colony and peace was not an option. Diseases like smallpox, influenza, and measles were spread among the locals and it was spreading from the Aboriginal camp to another. Diseases led the Aboriginals to defeat and their demoralization. Some generals saw the Aboriginals' people as threat to them and they couldn't reason with them, which determined them to either kill them or dispose them off the land. Britishers claimed that Aboriginals often killed the men, sheep, and cattle, which made them even determined to have the Aboriginals gone. There are books to prove that Aboriginals did hold arm against the colonizers, and some books that says otherwise. The resistance of Aboriginals are quite controversial, and it is still debatable. Problems Faced the first year of settlement in the new land was total disastrous remarked by many historians. It was problems for the convicts and the colonizers as they were not the natural inhabitants and weren't familiar with the seasonal pattern of the new land. It did become a challenge for them to farm. Upon arrival, the convicts were assigned tasks. For some, tasks were accounting and for some, the task was to build roads. It took long time to travel from England to New South Wales. Upon arriving, the convicts were already unfit, tired, or sick to do anything. Poverty time was high and New South Wales was not doing so good in agriculture. Governor Philip had to call for supplies from England as for the survival of the people. Exploration of Australia George Bass and Matthew Flinders, along with William Marshan, sailed and explored the Georges River in October 1795. Evidently, their thorough exploration led to be more informatics. Upon returning the details of their exploration, it led in settlement of new towns across the banks of the river. The boats used by them to sail along the Georges River was Tom Thumb. Their continuous sail and exploring the new land of Australia led to the new discoveries from time to time. Lake Illawarra, which later changed to Tom Thumb Lagoon after the name of their small boat, Port Hacking and Tasmania were later discovered. Aboriginal people guidance and continuous help did also come in handy. 
Here, aboriginals played important role in providing vital information about the land and the fertility. On discovery of Mount Blacksland, it had enough grass to sustain the stock of colonizers for 30 years. In mid-1830s, a treaty was signed between indigenous people and the colonizers. The indigenous had acres of land available to them. Land were given to the Britishers in exchange for money. The approximated land was 60,000 acres. Economy Australia was divided into three parts during 1846, the New South Wales, South Australia, and the Western Australia. Colonies were highly dependent on England for their food supplies, which was later imported from England to Australia. Although the British pound was the actual currency for trading services and products, but unofficially, rum was also accepted. While this period was difficult for the common people in Australia, the businessman made fortune. Profits were made by granting land, connect labor, and exporting native cedar back to England. The gold rush and the agricultural industries brought an economic boost to the countries. It was believed that two English businessmen, Barry and Wollstonecraft, made fortune off these strategies which mainly involved lands, slaves, and gold. Traditional Dividing, Religion, and Culture In 1846, Australia was divided into three major parts, the New South Wales, South Australia, and Western Australia. Indigenous people had performed rites and rituals before the colonizers imposed Catholics as major practice. It was believed that Dreamtime, the animist religion which was followed by the locals. Before the colonizers, the practice of Catholic religion was performed by La Perouse who conducted the first burial ceremony in the New Soil in 1788. It was La Perouse's father, Louis Reservoir, who had died in Botany Bay at the times of his exploration. Some Irish convicts and settlers immigrated from their land for crime, family disputes, and hence some minorities of Australia are also Irish. Convicts were impelled to attend the church services. Their children were often raised as Protestants. Reverends were moved from England to Australia to preach Catholicism, which often led to disability of services in the churches of England and Irish tradition and culture were slowly taken upon in England. The new practice of Catholicism and legal privileges soon started dropping in the New South Wales. An act was established by an Attorney General, John Plunkett. This act established equal rights between the religions that were majorly or in a small group practiced in Australia, namely Anglicans, Catholics, and Presbyterians. Education and Literature At the beginning of all this, education was limited and the primary education began at home. With the permission of King William IV, the Prime Minister and the Duke of Wellington decided to set up some institute mainly for grammar in the colonies. The King's School, Parramatta, is the oldest surviving school. There were many Catholic schools established by the time of 1833. Watkin Tench provided the first art of literature in the new land. He produced many journals and articles over the settlement. He came to Australia during the First Fleet in 1788. Australian theatre was established which was an European culture came with the Britishers during the First Fleet. Since then, many productions was made and performed as the source of entertainment. Freedom Governor Philip, who had the authority over the discipline and managing the morality of the people, had returned to England in 1792. The colonies were turned out to become prosperous day by day. They were true feeling of founding and people began rallying in, it was the making of Australia and celebrating the day of foundation. 
Historians remark the day as it was celebrated with drinking and high spirits. Finally, in 1818, January 26, Australia had become independent of British and the day was marked as holiday, making it the 30th anniversary of the British settlement. The day is celebrated as Australia Day. It's the day which celebrates the settlement of white colonies across the white continent and also remorse for the aboriginals who were slowly disposed of the land and white people took over the entire nation. History of Australia is debatable as the culture and the people take us long back into the past. We merely adopted the remarks that were written, but the people lived through the era were molded by the acquaintance the colonization had to offer.